Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to check out Overly Sarcastic Productions Journey to the West, Episode 9. Last time around, everyone warned me that while there's some sus stuff coming up, and they mention Mpreg, one. You know what? I'm going to drop that. I'm just going to hope they're just screwing with me. This is the internet. That's a thing. And I'm going to just convince myself because I know the thing that would hurt me most is that they're telling the truth, and I don't want to believe that. And I'm still going to focus on the fact that they said Agartha is not as bad as in Fake Grand Order. If you don't know what I'm talking about, your wallet thanks you. If I need to explain that, don't look into it. It's a rabbit hole of admittedly an amazing story and no financial solvency. Don't do that. Otherwise, I'm going to jump right in and just pretend I don't need to be worried about anything because there's no way that thing that I'm not going to say ever again is a thing. Oh, fuck, it's coming up, isn't it? Last time on Journey to the up. West, our heroes lost Tripitaka to the icy machinations of an insane yeah, literally every time. demon. But the timely arrival of oh, yeah, it was everyone's pet last time. tipped the scales in their favor the and revealed the demon's true nature as her beloved pet goldfish. A real thing that I swear happened. With Tripitaka rescued yep. once more, our heroes soon found themselves in deeper found danger the when a bull. powerful mountain it's also demon a pet. captured all but Sun Wukong and disarmed the mighty monkey king with Lao Tzu's diamond snare. With the help of old Is friends. And older enemies, the Monkey King was able to defeat the demon, retrieve. That's not how that happened. He didn't defeat the demon and get it back. He got it back and then he lost again, then he got it back, then he lost again. And then he got more people and they lost again. And then Lao Tzu was like, Bad bull, you come home. I mean, that's basically what happened, yeah. The stolen weapons and rescue his companions so they could once more continue their journey to the west. So, Still our heroes are trekking westward, Whoa. the seasons are changing, and the frigid chill Spring, of winter nice. has given way to the pleasant florals of Earth. Oh, okay, um, full disclosure, I didn't realize a season change was happening. I thought they were just in the mountains, so it was going to be snowy. I was not expecting there to actually be references of seasons, just because that implies that this has been a very short time, because this is only less than one year so far. Why is the butterfly freaking him out? Is that like a thing monkeys do, or am I just missing something? Early spring, and all things considered, this Lego trip has been him. surprisingly unbad. I'm sorry, I actually love this. The freaking butterfly landed on him, and it's actually freaking him out. Like, all the others, like, birds, even pigsies, not being pigsy, and then... Monkey's just like, I see your face, monster. <laughs> to be fair, if you actually really look at what a butterfly is really up close, that's nightmare fuel, man. Don't do that. I don't think I've felt this peaceful in years. I told you it isn't a crime to be comfy. Can we just pretend I don't actually agree with him on this? Thanks, I appreciate it. And full. No demons, no bandits, no kidnappings, just yeah. a nice, pleasant, scenic filler arc. But our heroes face sudden adversity when the way is barred by a small, clear, freshwater brook. How will oh. our heroes possibly overcome these insurmountable odds? Fortunately, this peaceful little brook comes with a scenic little boat that can take them across. But we can't be too careful. Maybe the boatman is evil. Nope. As it turns out, the boatman is a friendly old boat woman who is more than happy to take them across the river oh. with absolutely no nefariousness or kidnappings involved. Monkey is a little confused as to why a woman... Was there a war or something? You bars are so cute. I love this. He's actually becoming genre savvy. In one of the oldest books out there, they already had someone who was genre savvy. <laughs> I love this. Is doing what is typically a man's job, which the boat woman finds funny, but really? doesn't explain. So the gang crosses the river without incident, pays the ferry woman, and prepares to move oh, on. But yeah. first, oh no, horror of horrors. Tripitaka is... <gasps> thirsty. So he has what? Pigsy get some of that tasty river water for him. Now, PSA, drinking river water is typically a bad idea. Do not do this, no matter how refreshing it looks. Seriously, there's germs and bugs and stuff, just don't do it. Is that a little monkey down there with like a PSA marker and everything? That is absolutely awesome. Wait, just don't do it, Matt. Say Matt or mate? I don't know. I hope it says Matt, because that'd be a lot more fun. Also, when I hear this, and they're putting this thing up there about don't do it, um, it's worse than you think. Right now, it's bugs and germs and stuff. Keep in mind, sanitation, I'm not sure about ancient China, but in most of human history, in most places, you disposed of your shit in the river. And I mean that in the 
colloquial sense of, yeah, all the stuff you got that you don't want anymore, just throw it in the river, it'll get washed away. And literally feces in the river. Now, I'm going to pretend that I'm just uninformed about this and that this isn't something they would have done in China at any time when there was no one around to say, hey, I don't like that you're shitting in my drinking water, which is literally how it was done everywhere. There's a reason a significant portion of human history was drunk history because water was too dangerous to drink. Alcohol would kill the bugs and the literal germs from other people's shit. I'm reiterating it because that is an actual historical fact and it is not one I like knowing, so I'm sharing the pain with you. Ah, I suddenly feel better. Yes, since untreated water can make you sick. And sure enough, within a few minutes, yep. Tripitaka and Pigsy oh, both start oh. feeling pretty- I'll just drink the river water. It won't do terrible things to my fragile human tummy. What's Pigsy's excuse? I can feel dead sizey clutch. No monkeys on this side. Be lousy. The gang spot a village in the distance and hook oh. it over there to look for help, and monkey flags down an old. Excuse me, got any medicine that old tree? Being smarter than everyone, Itis. <laughs> and again, monkey doing better, and no one listening to him. I've been told it's incurable, but I'm still holding out hope. Also, these guys feeling like they need a little throw up time. They need to ask her for medicine for his river water drinking buddies and their sore tum tums. Unexpectedly, the old lady's like, oh, "Hold on, hold on. Your men drank the river water." From that river? Yes. And they are both men. Last time I checked. Oh, the girls are gonna love this. What? Instead of helping, a whole crowd of women forms to spectate Tripitaka and Pigsy's strange affliction, all of whom seem to find this situation utterly hilarious. Monkey's usually a big fan of sh- There's a joke here. I'm not getting it. Don't worry. I think you'll like it. No. No, don't tell- I know where this is going. I don't like where this is going. Uh, if there's a sudden cut, I'm just having a sudden flash of taste and skipping what I know is about to happen. Schadenfreude and shenanigans, but even he's got his limits, and he grabs the old lady and demands an explanation. The old woman tells him that the boys have arrived at the outskirts of the Western Kingdom of Women, an entire empire populated solely by women. Women do all the jobs, fill every social and political role, they're ruled by an empress instead of an emperor, and because there are no men, when a woman wants to have a child, she doesn't go about this the traditional way. Instead, she drinks so from we're the at child Agartha, and stream, went to emperor a magical immediately. river that makes anyone who drinks from it pregnant. And where exactly is the child and mother stream located? Oh, you know, about 20 feet that way. That's why the ladies think Tripitaka and Pigsy's situation is so hilarious, and monkey- Good news, gentlemen, I have good news and bad news. The good news, I'm laughing my ass off because you were too stupid to listen to me. Bad news, you're about to find out. He is fully inclined to agree. Tripitaka and Pigsy are, of course, very distraught, especially <laughs> Pigsy, when Sandy stuff. gently cautions him. Yeah, actually, they put a blue screen in there. They... <laughs> Oh, I just I love that. That's the probably also the completely correct response as well. Hurt the baby. Tripitaka is obviously emotionally unprepared to be a single parent, and more importantly, literally physically can't do it, and asks if there's any way for them to get unpregnant, and the woman tells them that there's no over-the-counter option that'll work on Magic River pregnancies, but there is a way. They just need to go to Male Undoing Mountain, enter the Child Destruction... It's actually Male Undoing Mountain. Child... or Destroyed Child Cave. Drop fetus spring. Uh, okay, I'm just going to pretend these are not actual translations, even though Overly Sarcastic Productions has been very accurate about this because, um. You know. There's things on YouTube you should comment on, and I'm just going to leave it at this, because even I have my limits, and there's just too much innuendo for this. And even that is a bit of a stretch, and I... Oh, God, that's not a good one, either. Everything I just said is a pun, and I don't want it. Ah. Cave and drink the magic water from the Baby Be Gone stream. However, this isn't as easy as it sounds, and it doesn't sound... Don't worry, it gets worse. Loving the naming convention, by the way. Do you guys sell t-shirts? Oh, 
please, please tell me there actually are t-shirts. Well, I'll get it for See, my it's wife. recently gotten a lot harder to access this stream because a Taoist called uh. the True Immortal Compliant has taken over the mountain and now controls the water and has been charging the women exorbitant prices for the tiniest glass of the stuff. There's no way a bunch of mendicant monks will be able to front the copay. This would be a big problem. Yeah, that won't be an issue. You guys need any hot towels while I'm out? Those pregnancies. Those are for. Those are pregnancy. For, what? Do you need hot towels for pregnancy? This is actually me just not knowing anything about that entire thing because my only knowledge of pregnancy is actually due to veterinary services because of all creatures great and small. That has nothing to do with people. Yeah. I got no idea. Whom if Monkey was planning on paying for anything ever in his entire life. He leaves Sandy in Might charge and flies off to Mail Undoing Mountain to scope out the sitch. He runs into a Taoist disciple who tells him there's no way his master will give him the water for free, and Monkey suggests he tell his master that Sun Wukong is here to see if that changes his mind. <laughs> this does in fact change his mind, but probably not in the direction Monkey what? wanted it to. As it turns out, the immortal is the older brother of the Bull Demon King and the uncle to Red Boy, and he's not too pleased about how- Wait, how are you related to the Bull Demon that was literally just- Oh, the demon king of the bull, not the previous bull demon that we just saw. Okay, that's that's different, yeah. How Monkey got his precious nephew in trouble with the bureaucracy of heaven. You know how this song and dance goes. The immortal pulls out a weapon, in this case a gnarly hook. You have a lot of nerve, Monkey. I know. It's this is not anything specific. Actually, yes it is. I'm assuming the weapon is super effective. And they fight for a little while until Monkey starts winning and Hey, do you take constructive criticism? Your customer service sucks. I don't know, you actually got to speak to the manager, right? Oh god, he just acted as Mountain Karen. You ever make a joke and then just realize, well, it's actually perfectly tame. You hate everything about it. the immortal retreats back to the well. Now, while the immortal can't beat Monkey, he is frustratingly good at keeping him away from the water, and in the ensuing scrap, Give Monkey ends up fumbling the what? bucket and dropping it down the well. With no way to get the water now, Monkey heads back to the group to figure out a plan B. What if you throw that guy in it? <laughs> okay. So Monkey's new plan is that he'll distract the immortal while Sandy goes and gets the water. This plan does... Wait, what, what did they say back there? Okay. So Monkey's, Monkey's new... You boys need more pillows? Yes, please. Oh my god, he looks so sad. Don't talk about my... <laughs> oh my god, Pixie's insane. And the horse is helping by grabbing a pillow. And Sandy honestly is just chilling and is like, yeah, this is cool. We're good. Sandy is best boy. New plan is that he'll distract the immortal while Sandy goes and gets the water. This plan does require leaving Tripitaka and Pigsy in the care of the old woman Do and her family, but them? she's pretty cool about it and promises. Yeah, not honestly, they're getting a great amusement like, out of this. No offense intended, but I kind of don't think you're capable of hurting literally any of us. And she's like, "Oh, is that how you think this place works? Listen, son, you're all just lucky we're all too old to be interested in men anymore. If the what? young ladies around here had found you, you'd be having a much harder time going anywhere." With that tasty little bit of They must never tell Pigsy foreshadowing dropped, Monkey and Sandy head back to the mountain, and Monkey taunts the Immortal to lure him out. The Disciple hypes the Immortal up and tells- Wait, what did they say? Monkey and Sandy- Aren't you going to kick down the door while he's having tea? That'll start anticipating it if I don't mix up things, because they have been spreading words, so them actually anticipating it because of what he's done has got around. Which, oddly enough, makes a lot of sense, and it's kind of weird that it actually makes sense. Head back to the mountain, and Monkey taunts the Immortal to lure him out. The Disciple hypes the Immortal up and tells him Monkey doesn't- If he thought he could win, why would he knock? You are so right. You know what? No, I'm going to go back with the Mountain Karen on this one. The customer service here really sucks. Stand a chance of beating him, and with that optimistic forecast ringing in his ears, the immortal goes out to fight. While Monkey keeps him busy, Sandy heads for the well with a brand new bucket, and when the disciple tries to block the way, Sandy breaks his arm. Damn! That's the nicer option than killing him. I mean, yeah. I can't speak from personal experience, but I hear childbirth is worse. <laughs> oh, God, Sandy. I mean, yeah. It's not killing people like Monkey still does, but, um, just that little reminder that Sandy ate people Monkey didn't. He's the nicer one, but he's also the one that ate people. He's reformed, remember? Sandy gets the water without too much trouble and calls for Monkey, who stops pretending like this is anywhere near a fair fight and blocks the Immortal's hook. Since the Immortal hasn't really done anything wrong, except blackmailing an entire community of women by holding their reproductive rights hostage, <coughs> and Monkey still- I 
I'm sure that wasn't a comment about anything in particular, and I have no idea what it's about. No, brother, who could have possibly snapped your arms off? Oh, oh. wait, someone broke his arms? If you all stand and let... Oh, he's just trying to remember it. Still has respect for his brother, the Bull Demon King. He just gives him a very stern warning. Okay, seriously, this is just an art comment right now. When they draw Monkey going out, and when I mean they, I mean Red, draws Monkey going all out with the glowy eyes and the background effects. God damn. And Sandy's just like, whoa, forgot he's intimidating. The, can't read that piece of the thing, of heaven couldn't stop me. And you think I was fighting you for real? <laughs> Seriously, man. Turning to stop blackmailing Armies people from the heaven, water okay. and turns to leave. Obviously, the immortal's none too pleased about this and goes for a backstab. Hey, so he does. He sweeps the leg, grabs his hook, and snaps it in half. Damn. Literally cowed, the immortal gives up. Okay, hear me out. We tell Biggs that you got thirsty on the way back. Oh my god. Sandy! Even better, nice. And Monkey and Sandy head back. Tripitaka and Pigsy drink the water, and one very alarming bowel movement later are declared fully pregnancy free. Uh, that... Tripitaka and Pigsy drink the water, and one very unspeakably horrible noises. I'm not sure which is funnier. Sandy absolutely being freaked out by it. Or this actually being at the level of the only other thing Monkey's ever been freaked out by to this level, slightly less than, was Quan Yin having a bad day because her pet goldfish was missing. Yep. The alarming bowel movement later are declared fully pregnancy free. They leave the rest of the water with the old... They will never speak of this again. I just... <laughs> You boys are just too sweet. I may have been called many names. Sweet is a new one. Yep. Water with the old lady who helped them, who says this precious commodity will help cover the cost of her funeral. And with that delightful business sorted out- Really? Oh, that's... morbid? Also, does that mean now she's the one charging for the water? Yeah, sure. Out, our heroes are all set to continue their journey to the west, though I can't imagine Tripitaka is too happy with the concept of riding a horse right now. Sandy cautions them to take- I'd just like to point out the male equivalent would be I think the best way to phrase what I'm trying to say in ways that are YouTube appropriate is think of a catheter and for everyone who actually knows what I'm talking about I am so sorry I regret bringing it up as actually I, I'm thinking about now and I, I don't want to oh, oh oh it should not go it should not fit ah, I regret everything I just said I'm honored to have shared this unforgettable moment with both of you, specifically from the sidelines without having it happen to me. Take it easy, since new mothers are very delicate, officially confirming his status as the funniest person alive. So the gang continues westward <laughs> and eventually reach a massive city, evidently the capital of the Kingdom of Women. Tripitaka tells the gang to be on their best behavior and to control- Remember, we are guests in this land. <laughs> just look right at Pixie. Why would you single me out? To be fair, saying it to monkeys probably not a bad idea. He usually waits for provocation before earning it, though. Big Z is now proving the Tripitak is learning. Nice. All themselves, which turns out to be a bit of a misread, Whoa. since the minute they walk through the gates, they're swarmed by a mob of young women who've heard about this men thing and are very curious to learn more. Monkey heard has Pigsy scare them off with his gross monster face, but even that doesn't dissuade them completely, since Tripitaka is evidently a very pretty man. Monkey and Sandy crank up the scare factor yeah, too, which, let's be honest, can't possibly work on all of these ladies, but- Oh my god, they just were going wow! <laughs> oh, wow. It's someone's fetish, and apparently they all cover it. Yeesh. Yeah, sorry, you're kind of a novelty. But it keeps the mob off them, enough for them to make it through to a city official who guides them to a reception house and tells them they'll need to be ever used to the that. throne and have their papers certified before they're allowed through the city. The gang is served a nice hot meal by a house full of beautiful women, and meanwhile, the official legs it back to the palace to tell the queen what's going on. Now, the queen is very happy to hear about these visitors and her fine. This monk sounds like perfect husband material. Well, it's different than usual. He seems really passive. I think his disciples do all the work. So it won't be an adjustment for him. <laughs> oh.
Oh, wow. And already Agartha's is better just because they're making jokes about it. As opposed to Agartha and FGO, which was just a joke. Mind City because she happens to know that Tripitaka is basically blood brothers with the Tang Emperor. And if she wants to consolidate her power and guarantee the continuation of her family line, she can do that very effectively by marrying Tripitaka. The official tells her that while Tripitaka... Huh. Yeah, you know, I actually forgot all about that part. Kind of surprised it hasn't come up more often. Granted, it's mostly demons who don't care about that because immortality is better, but, you know, it's different. He is very pretty, but I think he and his crew are on some epic quest. Well, I'm sure the crew will get on fine without him. I mean, they could, but it would ruin the entire point. Granted, they could just pull a Chi Chi and, you know, wait until after he's done. I don't think that would happen. Technically, it would be a better option and more likely than to survive whatever monkey does is indeed a legit snack, his three disciples are a lot more spicy. The queen doesn't mind letting the disciples continue their journey westward, but their oh-so-juicy master will be staying with her. While the queen gets a matchmaker on the horn, the official heads back to give Tripitaka the good news. Speaking of whom, Tripitaka and the gang are enjoying their meal when they hear that the grand- I don't know what she wants me. Uh, for some reason, I thought that was a, like a smartphone. I was like, wait, why does Monkey have a smartphone? I know he's kind of crazy, but what the hell? No, no, it's tea though, because I see the ring. Oh, definitely a wedding. Probably a couple kids. Has he ever actually had any experience with that at all, other than just laughing at them in the previous section of this? Grand Preceptor wants a word with them, which has Tripitaka a little confused until Monkey nonchalantly says the Queen probably wants to marry him. Tripitaka unsurprisingly panics, but Monkey tells him that- Well, man, you're totally marriage material. <laughs> If marriage uh. is on the table, Tripitaka should say yes and then let Monkey handle everything. Sure enough, the Preceptor heads in with the- They did the you receive, I receive. I receive, hand in marriage, you receive. Kingdom, wealth, dowry, life of luxury, disciples, continue your quest. Spectacular boinking. I mean, honestly, if you say, come back when you're ready, this is even a good deal. The queen's proposal. I mean, she gets a lot more out here than she's adding, but consort with the entire wealth of the kingdom as his dowry. The disciples will obviously be allowed to continue their journey and get to the Thunderclap Monastery on their own time, which means this. So how many frames is it going to be before Pigsy says something stupid and completely is in favor of this plan? Or is incredibly against it because of sheer jealousy? I kind of hope it's the second one. Technically wouldn't even mean giving up the quest. Tripitaka is dead silent, but Pigsy and I... It looks like... If looks are... Oh, if looks... Okay, that's what it is. If looks are an issue, tell your boss I can shapeshift. Oh my god announces that there's no way Tripitaka would ever agree to that, which is why the oh, queen asked won't. him instead. Tripitaka asks Monkey what he thinks. And okay, that was out of line, but also, are you single? Uh, wow. I didn't realize he would get off on that. And she's also very much aware that he's getting off on it. I feel sorry for the guard. And Monkey's like, honestly, dude, sounds like a pretty sweet deal. The preceptor heads off to make <laughs> the arrangements, and Tripitaka immediately grabs Monkey by the lapels and asks him what the hell he thinks he's doing. Tripitaka can't I love it! I'm just sorry, just had that face, the shit-eating grin! One of the absolute reasons I love overly sarcastic productions is just some of the faces they pull in. Tripitaka! This is way more material for his crazed facial animations than ever. And Monkey, knowing exactly what he's getting into, looking right at the camera, looking right at us, breaking that fourth wall with the giant... Well, I guess I was going to say sledgehammer, but it more like shape changing pole fits better. Still, this is just perfect. Vincent Tripitaka immediately grabs Monkey by the lapels and asks him what the hell he thinks he's doing. Tripitaka can't get married. He's a Buddhist monk, a really, really devoted one. This is terrible. Monkey tells him to chill out and points. Well, if you're sure, we can tell the Empress you declined. Then murder our way out. And when she gets mad and tries to stop us, you know my plan C. So basically what they've done everywhere. To some extent. It's out that turning the queen down flat was never going to work out well for them. The people of this kingdom are humans, innocent ones. If they had to fight them, they'd obviously win, but they'd be killing innocent people in the process, yeah, something Tripitaka has historically frowned upon. Tripitaka admits he didn't think of that, and Monkey lays out his cut. Are you suddenly cool with murder? No, I'm so sorry. Tripitaka baby mode. I was not expecting that, and I absolutely love this. <laughs> didn't think so alternative plan, a husband heist. They're going to go through with the what? wedding, throw a huge banquet, get all their paperwork in order, and then when Tri Wedding? Paperwork? Head to the edge of the city. Monkey uses his super magic powers to freeze everyone and save the day for everyone. Leave. Wait, he can just freeze everyone? 
Sure, why not? He can do everything. Pataka tearfully sees them off at the edge of the city. Monkey will use his magic to freeze everyone for a whole day while they book it off into the sunset. You know, people keep saying he's basically Goku, and I see where that's from. But at this point, he's basically Golden Age Superman. His answer to what can he do is yes. And that's basically where it ends. Bad plan, all things considered. Meanwhile, the queen hears a proposal's been accepted and piles into a royal carriage to... You like jazz? You know what? That's a, probably a reference to something, but I have absolutely no idea. You know what? Fuck it. If someone could tell me what this is a reference to, I'd appreciate it. I'm, I'm feeling like an idiot because I don't have the slightest clue, and it's kind of bugging me because I feel I should know what that's a reference to. And whenever someone tells me, I'm probably going to be sitting here going, of course it was, but I'm not there yet, and it's bugging me. So... Thanks in advance. I actually do appreciate it. And or absolutely hate myself for missing it. Meet her future boo. She finds Tripitaka just as pretty as boo? she'd hoped for, despite him being too flustered to speak, and she invites yeah. him into the carriage to head for the wedding hall. Tripitaka pretends <laughs> to be totally cool with this, even though all he wants is to be a good Buddhist and get some scriptures, dang it. So the gang head for the wedding hall and enjoy the beautiful and ornate wedding party, and at Tripitaka's request, the queen recertifies their paperwork and agrees to wait until tomorrow to officially put him on the throne. The wedding. Oh yeah, he's just running away right now. Also, just Pigsy having fun, standing on the horse is sticking its tongue out. That is probably my favorite picture of horse yet. And Drippataka, oh no, human contact, you monster. Party wraps up and the plan rolls into its final stages. Tripitaka politely asks if he can see his disciples off one final time, and the queen obviously agrees, and they pile into the chariot to see them off at the edge of town, followed by a massive mob of beautiful young women. When Tripitaka steps out of the carriage to say his goodbyes, he drops the pretenses and very gently asks the queen to let him continue on his journey. The oh. Wait. Make sure to visit us on the trip back, too. Oh, oh, she was talking to them, not him. I thought he was actually going with them, and he's... Ooh, I wish I knew what that said, because it looks like actual characters, too. ...carriage to say his goodbyes, he drops the pretenses and very gently really asks nice. the queen to let him continue on his journey. The queen is very upset about him suddenly changing his mind, but Pigsy scares her back, and it looks like the gang is going to manage to leave without anything worse than a broken heart, until a girl... Okay, one? Damn! Pigsy actually looks scary. Was not expecting that. He just hasn't tried the right woman yet? Seriously, dude? Or, what, lady? Wow! I mean, one, that's the queen. If any other place in this has proven anything, death is easy, and you just tried to steal her apparently already married husband. Damn. Girl sprints out of the crowd, tells Tripitaka he should try boning her instead, grabs him, and vanishes in a cyclone. Finally, a what? demon showed up. I was starting to get worried. Oh. Loki freaks out and blasts off to look for Tripitaka, which has the unexpected <laughs> side effect of giving the queen closure, since she didn't realize these monks could, like fly and stuff. Her officials conclude that Tripitaka and his disciples- Really? That worked? Did a demon actually do them a solid? Okay. Clearly, they were super Buddhist. Clearly, your majesty. It's a shame, but I've never needed a husband before anyway. I mean, it sounded like you didn't need them after. It was literally a power play, and admittedly, a very good one were so dang Buddhist that her marriage scheme was never going to break his iron will, and the queen and her court head back to the palace, dejected but recovering. And meanwhile, the gang chase the cyclone until it disappears into a standard issue demon mountain lair. Pigsy wants to kick in the door, but Monkey wants to scout first to make really sure familiar. it's the right door, so he turns into a bee and sneaks in. He finds a surprisingly beautiful flower field with a female demon chilling in it, attended by young women serving her a pleasant meal of red bean buns and also human flesh buns. The attendants also bring in Tripitaka, and the demon- Ew. I wonder if she's related to Red Boy, just because between the wind and the coloration, that kind of makes it seem like it's a thing. Hey, handsome, care for some man meat? There's no way Red didn't know exactly what they wrote there. Maybe show a little more clavicle, too. Oh, my. I don't even, she's... Does that count as flirting or flat-out sexual harassment at this point? Minus pleasantly offers him a bun. Tripitaka is very aware that this situation is a lot more dangerous than his last unwilling marriage, so he plays it safe and politely turns down the human bun on the grounds that he's vegetarian, but accepts the red bean bun and makes polite con- What did she mean by that but isn't vegetarian? I know it's a reference to something, but I'm not sure I want to figure it out. So what do you like to do to relax, meditate? Not have a demon eating people holding you. 
That's usually in the not bitey range. Conversation while he waits for the gang to come rescue him. The demoness makes some very inappropriate jokes that Tripitaka is too much of a soft boy to get, but Monkey is infuriated. Wait, he wasn't just playing coy, he actually didn't get it? You know, I think the queen was right. He is super Buddhist. Wow. Killing him would be less painful to watch. Oh my god. <laughs> because he's so oblivious. He, he's actually answering the questions. I just... I just need a second. It's so much cringe. But it's perfect because of it. ...by her lascivious puns and attacks. The attendants bundle Tripitaka away. Wait, she was referencing the puns. Were those actually in the original? I thought there was just something red added. Neat. Hey, ...while the demoness whips out a trident and clashes with Monkey. The battle ends up taking them straight out the door and down the mountain, Ooh. at which point Sandy and Pigsy both join in, which unexpectedly does not help, as the demoness whips out two more tridents and boasts that while Monkey might not recognize her, the Buddha himself knows and fears her. With that, she jumps into the air and stabs down with something Monkey can't quite make out because right. he's a little too distracted by the horrible blinding pain. With Monkey incapacitated, the fight turns very quickly, was and not expecting it, that. while the demoness heads back into the mountain for the night. Monkey has no idea what she hit him with that could have actually actually hurt him because his skull turned indestructible about it's probably that thing on his head then that they hit i also have no idea about buddhist mythology or i guess anything to do with it now that i think about it so i have no idea who that would be a reference to out of curiosity how would you compare this to the pain of childbirth on a scale of one to drinking molten copper while crushed under a mountain for 500 years solid eight damn on the other hand, I'm not sure how that would go, so maybe it's one out of 500? There's one for every year? I don't know. Probably pretty bad. About three immortalities ago, but whatever it was, he's in no position to fight. So they rest for the night and hope they can figure something out in the morning. Meanwhile, the demoness sets her sights on seducing Tripitaka. Careless whisper in the background, really? Tripitaka, you lucky, also poor screwed bastard. I know exactly what I just said. Which, as previously established, is a losing battle even in ideal circumstances. Tripitaka politely but firmly turns her down for hours. If we're looking for a relationship, I'd have stayed with that lone... With the lovely Empress? Wait, he was actually considering it? I mean... Damn. Just before she snaps and has her minions tie him up and get him out of her sight. The next morning... Oh my god, he was pla- I didn't... Politely but firmly turns her down for hours before she snaps... Okay. That. That right there. That is something I have never seen before. Smug Tripitaka. I didn't know I wanted that. But I see it. And now it's just kind of awesome. And just... <laughs> You know, everyone said the previous one where he had to meditate off was Tripitaka doing the most useful thing ever. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. Right now. He's so good at being captured, he convinced a demon to capture him and take him away as a prisoner instead. I'm going with this as him actually winning. Snaps and has her minions tie him up and get him out of her sight. The next morning, Monkey's feeling way better, so he sneaks into the cave to see how Looks like you had a wild night, lover boy. I'll have you know, I was tied up for perfectly kosher reasons. I'm not going to touch on that one because I think it's actually hilarious that that's the word they chose. Tripitaka is doing, finding him very disgruntled but thoroughly unboned. Tripitaka accidentally wakes up the demon. Okay, one. This is the nightshirt, like the bags under the eyes, the hair sticking out. I love this. I don't want anything to do with that powdered cadaver. Ew, wow. Okay, okay. Time for some refreshing morning murder. Ness by loudly declaring that Monkey needs to rescue him right this minute because he's totally uninterested in boning anyone and the only thing he cares about is getting those scriptures. That means it's about five o'clock, so Monkey zips out of the cave and Pigsy oh, smashes God. the door in. They fight for a while before the demoness whacks the Pigsy in the face with that mysterious weapon and puts him out of commission. She heads back inside to stew while Monkey and Sandy try to figure out their next move. They're not having that much luck fighting the demon because they're really not even sure what she is. But luckily, Monkey spots an unassuming old lady nearby who's positively radiant with auspicious light and realizes Kuan Yin must have gotten impatient and by to see what the whole oh my god <laughs> seriously monkey just figured it out yeah i don't see the hands around her sometimes they actually leak through go on in you old scamp you look great why do i bother 
Yeah. Up was. Kuan Yin reveals herself and explains that the demoness is actually a scorpion. The tridents she uses are her claws, and the mysterious weapon that keeps taking them out is her stinger tail, loaded oh. with a seriously potent poison. She used to listen in on Buddha's lectures until one day she got snippy, stung his hand, and ran. Hence why even the Buddha fears her. Kuan Yin also says she can't help. Why is everything just animals listening to them? It's like they're literally. They're literally making their own bad guys because they just talk to everyone. You're going to want to get Star-Lord Mao down here? Why him specifically? It's better if I don't tell you. Why do I have a feeling this is going to be bad? Help them directly, but she knows who can, and points Monkey in the direction of Star-Lord Mao, the spirit of one of the 28 lunar mansions corresponding to the Pleiades. Kuan Yin pieces out, and Monkey zips up to heaven to track down Star-Lord Mao, bouncing around a bit before he eventually finds him. Monkey Sounds like there's no time to waste on calming tea? Pleiades Daystar Official. Oh, I wouldn't mind tea. Explains the situation, and Star Lord Mao declares there's no time to waste on pleasantries, and they book it back to the mountain. Star Lord Mao magically cures the lingering effects of the scorpion demon's poison, so Monkey and Pigsy are back in what fighting for him. Smash down the door again to lure out the demon. Oh my god, they actually used the same thing, but it's her now. He actually. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's enough differences in how it's drawn that this is not the same frame, but this is the thing. One more encore! How, this is like the third time now that he's smashing in someone's house when they're drinking? Oh my god. Which is when Star-Lord Mao reveals his true form and all his divine glory as a seven-foot chicken. What? Huh. Star-Lord Mao, now a chicken, crows twice, transforming the demoness back to her true scorpion form and what? paralyzing her, which lets Pigsy kill her without too much trouble. Star-Lord Mao beams back up to heaven and the- You know, there's a joke in here about a giant- Rooster, but I'm not going to make that because I know better than to do that because it will be sent to my wife that is a clip and I know I will not actually have an excuse for that. So I'm not going to go that way. I know what is safe and that would not be safe. Let's just say it's a good thing you guys didn't bang. Your validation is truly comforting. Although the Empress was nice. The gang trapes into the cave to rescue Tripitaka and the demon's attendants, who it turns out were all kidnapped girls what? from the Kingdom of Women. Oh. They return the kidnapped women to their homes before getting back on the road and setting off once more on their journey to the west. Our heroes have overcome another obstacle, but the way is only getting more treacherous. Will the Monkey King's strength be enough to protect Tripitaka from what lies ahead? Probably. Find out next time on Journey to the West. So I'm just wondering right now, how many innuendos did I make without even realizing it? Because there's a whole bunch I was trying not to say. And for my own sanity's sake, I'm not going to double check how many slipped out because then I don't have plausible deniability for when my wife sees this and I have no excuse. This way, it's like, well, I didn't know I did that. And even though you literally have video evidence of me saying it, she also knows me well enough to realize me saying things without thinking it through at all or even realize I said them is accurate. You know, having that not actually be a joke is kind of depressing. I probably should look at that. But in this case, it's going to serve me well, so I'm going to look at it later. Is that a good reason? Considering it's going to save me from couch time? Yes. Yes, it is. And I'm sticking to that. Otherwise, yeah, no, this was better than anything I was fearing. And for everyone who said so, thanks. And we're going to just stick to how great that part was and not any of that initial segment that... Yeah, we went there. That's not a new thing. Apparently, it's a very old thing people thought about for a long time. And I, um... Okay. Yeah. Catheter, man. Catheters. Nothing else to say. Moving on. I'm just going to cut this one here and just think about everything other than that. And it's in my head. Oh, why can't I get it out? You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. And when you're done, subscribe if you like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Unless there's not a next one, I need to double check that. If there isn't, maybe start Pope Fight. And if there is, I'll check that out next. It'll be awesome. Because it's just more and it's good. I know, I'm easily pleased. This is really good shit too. So, eat. I'll see you guys then. Adios.